Welcome to the new River City Gamers Podcast, hosted by SCXCR and Well Unreal 007, as well as many other members from the River City Gamers website. Stay tuned for all the gaming news, new pickups, and everything else we feel like talking about on the River City Gamers Podcast. Hello! Welcome to the River City Gamers Podcast! I'm SCXCR! Uh, I can't really yell, or I don't want to yell, so I'm just Blonde Guy Gamer. <coughs> uh, I think I shot out my throat earlier, so, um, I'm Angel Halo. And this is the week after uh, Angel and Team Texas had their panel in San Japan, and now on the same weekend, it was the same weekend, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Blondie, me, Wiz, and some Quebec guy had a panel at Con Bravo. And two weeks after, I went to Canada Con alone with no panel. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a little bit I'd like to talk about with my panel later on, if that's fine. I won't go into great details I did, so just so you know. You're on a timer. Okay. At San Japan, um, I had a panel called Retro Arcade Building. Let's build an arcade cabinet. Now, it's something I've been meaning to make into a video for a long while, but uh, I may as well say it now. I got myself an arcade cabinet where I can just plop in a computer and video game system. I felt like I wanted to share my experiences as well as my knowledge uh, to anyone else who's interested in taking up the hobby, which is where the idea of retro arcade building took place. And I had a pretty good showing. Uh, More than 20 people showed up. And I talked about only the bare basics of arcade buildings. And I even uh, show them, show my audience what you could accomplish if you if you go beyond the basics. And and needless to say, they were quite impressed. Uh, Successful panel. A lot of people loved it. And I'm going to do it again next year. I guess I'll just quickly talk about it, too. So we just had a panel that's called uh, Reviewing Games and Beyond, where we just talk about uh, the basics of game reviewing, how you can get in the game, reviewing, stuff like that. It went all right, all things considering. Uh, We did have at least a dozen or so people show up. And you you could probably tell I was just, like, I'm sorry if I came across as a bit nervous when I was, like, hosting the panel, but that was just me trying to, I guess, fill in the Zero's shoes, since if he was there, he'd be the one doing it, I imagine. So, yeah, we basically just talked about all the stuff you would need to get in reviewing and suggestions on how to do it and stuff like that. So safe to say that we had pretty uh, good starts of our panels and um, some, and like I said, I plan doing mine again next year with even more panels. Uh, how about you guys? Actually, there's another panel that's going on right now, and it's called Gaming News. The gaming News. So real. I wonder how many people are going to attend to this panel. Well, I can actually tell you who's not going to be on this panel. People who use the money glitch in GTA Online. Wait, that sounds like old, old news. And take it from a guy that's played GTA Online. I remember months back that there was like some sort of money glitch type of thing. That's not the news. The news is people getting banned for it. Allegedly, also getting banned by quote-unquote undercover rock star police users. What? (laughs) There's apparently a police force in rock star studios. (laughs) Yep, they've been cracking down on people who... If you have an exploit like this, why would you make a YouTube video of you doing the exploit where anyone can find out immediately what your account is? What's up, guys? This is Yellow Swag 420. I'm going to show you this crazy awesome glitch. Like, subscribe, do this shit. Next video. Oh, That's shit, pretty you guys. much every fucking YouTuber ever with GTA. Yeah, so, Sir Weed, I have no sympathy for you. Noah J456, I have no sympathy for you. But, so, for something that's happened, like, a while back they're now rolling out bands or was there something was there a new new glitch that came out recently I, no, I believe up. that this is because of the old glitch like they're just catching up with this now wow the only yeah. thing that happened to me 
in terms of the glitch, I was given like a hundred, like hundred thirty thousand dollars. That's it. I didn't uh, commit anything. I was just given money at one random spot. But I've been in servers that have had fucking money glitching go around, and I just, I just left. I just find it kind of funny that they're actually having like undercover people go in games to find the, these people they're using glitches. <laughs> and I'm just imagining like if if GTA Online took place in Vice City, it'd be like Miami Vice. So how is Bungie gonna handle the Destiny police in case there's exploits there? <laughs> what I imagine when I hear this is, I think it's like Super Troopers where Farva's like playing GTA Online. <laughs> so this doesn't go for undercover brother type of rule? Uh, uh, talk about taking cyber police, literally. Okay, moving on. You know who else I have no sympathy for? Professional Call of Duty player Patrick Aches Price. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. Major League Gaming suspended Patrick Price four matches and one upcoming tournament. He's been disciplined because of, quote, due to repeated harassment of MLG employees and conduct detrimental to the league. I don't know, you know, let's both do it. Three, two, one. Oh, 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 where you at? Where you at? <laughs> oh my dick hurt! Ah. We a joint. Ah. <laughs> okay. Can't wait to see the YouTube of that. It actually gets better too. Price, who is the captain of some team called Evil Geniuses, in response to this, he broadcasts the email address of the Major League Gaming CEO, and a bunch of fans like sent threatening messages to it. Because that's job. how you get your band taken down, is by... Banned for life? So, he sounds like DSP Gaming. Patrick Price is legit dumber than Patrick from Spongebob. <laughs> well, what'd you expect? This is Call of Duty. No, this is MLG in general. My god. If, if there's one thing that makes me hate gaming tournaments in general, it's MLG. It's all their fault. That's why we make fun of it. Church thing. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, you know, you know. Going back to fight sticks earlier, did you know there's like an MLG themed fight stick for like two hundred dollars? Who's gonna pay two hundred fucking dollars for her fight stick? Unless you're that obsessed with fighting games, and even then, you gotta have to draw the line somewhere. We'll actually come back later to fighting game players who waste their money, but for now. Uh, let's move on to Mr. O'Donnell. Marty O'Donnell. He got... I, like, uh, he got fired from... He got, like, let go from Bungie, and uh, Marty ended up, I think, filing a lawsuit against Bungie, and I'm pretty sure Marty won. Well, oh. it's not that he won the lawsuit, it's that uh, Bungie's president, Harold Ryan, came to a settlement over the lawsuit. Oh, so, oh, it was that. I mixed it up, but... Well, you were close. Uh, close enough. The lawsuit so. uh, had O'Donnell asking for double the unpaid benefits that he got, which was, like, somewhere in the neighborhood of $38,000, so he was asking for, like, 76000 And they settled the lawsuit for close to 100000 So I'm, I'm still it? kind of baffled that... Bungie kicked him out, and it's like they never explained why. Like, so, never got to know why. So, what did he do uh, in Bungie? The music! He's, oh, he's okay. done the he music. He was a composer for, for Halo. Okay, yeah. just, just to elaborate, that's all. Like, out of, like, in terms of, like, um, Bungie employees, Marty's definitely one of the most well known ones based on the music. Oh, yeah, the music's. Say what you will about the Halo series, the music is definitely great. Can we get to what's important? You know, the music. And I am banned. Goodbye. I am done. Here. <laughs> so, we don't know the true reason behind the why he was let go to begin with, so... Um, what can be discussed, really? 
I don't know. Maybe he's like, oh, I can't use the Halo theme in this game. Hmm. Oops. Well, the game play looks like it plays a lot like Halo anyway, so... You could just do, like, uh, what WCW did, where they'd have, like, licensed music, but then they'd change a couple notes of it, so technically they couldn't get sued for it. <laughs> Completely original, guys. Never mind how much it sounds like Seek and Destroy by Metallica. Original, do not sue. But, uh, on to people who we do have some idea of why they're leaving. Square Enix CTO Yoshihisa Hashimoto left the company citing personal reasons. For those of you who don't know, Hashimoto was the tech director for the reboot of Final Fantasy XIV. In other words, he's responsible for making sure it doesn't suck. Yeah, he had to fix that mess. <laughs> you know, if I if I had to put up with all that and the company didn't give me much credit, I'd probably leave too, being like, you made your game completely broken, I'm gonna fix it, what's this, you're not gonna give me much credit for it? Well, shove it, shove it then. Well, of course he said personal reasons, that could be mean, anything, but, you know. Well, then again, Square Enix in general these days. Yeah, in general, they... Well, I don't like to say they're terrible with mobile games, because they have made some decent mobile game ports. Other than a lot of missteps. Like that one uh, Final Fantasy game. What was it called again? It's completely memorable, surely. Which one? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the mobile the, the, division the, is highly regarded. You know, the one where you have to pay for every single thing. Almost as bad as Candy Crush All Saga. the bravest. I mean, every yeah. mobile game ever. It's free. By the way, you have to pay a dollar for a new stage. You have to pay five dollars for a boss stage. That's what. Pay for Sonic in a Sonic game. And Knuckles. No, no one. Okay, we're getting a little sidetracked, but. <laughs> okay, so any more about this? No, but speaking of things that are free, the British government just passed some new rules in regards to online game piracy. Would you care to take a guess what they are? Everything's uh, free. No one gives a shit. You're, you're actually pretty close. Fuck. Uh, the British government technically just decriminalized online video game music and movie piracy. Huh. Yep. Starting in 2015, this is how piracy is going to work. Persistent file sharers will be sent up to four warning letters explaining that their actions are illegal. If the notes are ignored. No further action will be taken. Okay. So for those of you who remember that Hans Blix scene from Team America, we will be very angry. And we will write you a letter telling you how angry we are. That's basically what this is. Well, hmm. Not much I can say for the matter, but... Uh, in fact, there's not a whole lot I can say about the media for the British government, because I don't exactly know how that works. I can certainly tell you about American media, but that'd be subtracted from the point. Except for the fact that they are very hard to catch up with today's technology, and will do everything they can to make sure it's well controlled, which is yeah, impossible. But, yeah, but here it doesn't seem like there's that much of a consequence. Like, people will probably just be like, oh, I'll just get letters, yeah, whatever, just pirate everything. You know, I, I like to think of this as an honor system of some kind. Because I can recall one case where... Um, I, this game, if I remember, Serious Sam Double X, it's a 2D, it's a 2D uh, Serious Sam game. Serious Sam Double DXL? Yes, where it, where upon its launch, it was pirated so many times that the developers decided to politely ask the pirates that if they truly support the game, if they could at least donate whatever amount they have to help with the development. I don't know the results of that, but that's what I'm getting out of this whole uh, decriminalization thing. It can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. It depends. I guess it won't really affect them, the amount of piracy to begin with, because it seems like no matter what's done to either prevent or if they're just like, yeah, whatever, like it'll probably just be the same regardless, I think. Is there anything else, news-wise? No, that's pretty much it for gaming news which means we can go ahead and go into upcoming releases 
And this should not take long. Because there are no video games anymore? Well, no games! Well, Gaming's I'm skipping over. over, like, things that are just, <laughs> like, updates to other games. Like, Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition, who cares? Madden 15, who cares? Metro uh, Redux, whatever. It's just two games in one for next gen, whatever. And remember what I said about fighting game players wasting their money? Ultra Street Fighter 4! Yay! Uh, I'm just sheepishly raising my hand. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later. But it doesn't. It isn't Last of Us for PS4 coming out. Yeah, okay, re-release. Uh... Yeah, I know. That's that's another re-release. Oh yeah. But did you hear about thing... what they're doing for that? For people who got it on PS3, want on PS4, you trade in the PS3 copy, and then you only pay twenty-five dollars. That's actually not bad. Cause... Unless you pre-ordered before the price drop, and you're not getting those ten dollars back. Oops. <laughs> Gg. But I did hear the good thing about the about the PlayStation 4 remaster is that it supposedly has all the content in, from all the DLC, and Ooh. it'll only cost fifty dollars brand new. Ooh. So the map the math adds up, and it's actually not a bad deal for those who own the PS4 and haven't played the PS3 version yet, or want to upgrade from the PS3 or version. Or from what my friend told me that he saw some guy on stream ask. Should I get Last of Us on PS3 or PS4? Ah! <laughs> like, what kind of question is that? Ugh. Should I get the one with less content or the one with more content? Should I get the game that was meant for the PS3 or a port? Uh, or a port with all the... That's... Fuck it, let's just get Tomb Raider again and again. Because that's all we've been getting. Whatever. Or... What? We can That's... wait until early September and get Destiny. Okay, sure. Well, that's the, that's the problem when we're when we're kind of like we're still transitioning to the next generation, and we still got the st still got the platforms like PS3, and Xbox 360. So there's still yeah. kind of that boundary where we're kind of transitioning. Give it five years, and then they'll finally start fucking actually. Yeah, and I'm still on the fence if I want to own a PS4 or an Xbox One because I have like almost no reason to own either at this point. Okay, Mr. Arcade Man. I'll just say right now, I, I pre-ordered the Destiny bundle, which oh. may or may not go through depending on how much money I, money I have by the 9th of September. Because oh. I gotta be responsible. But I can give you at least game? one reason to hold on to your PS3 at the least. Tales of Zillia 2. Hello. Why did I buy the first one again and never opened it? Whatever. I lost money. I can also give you a reason to sell your PS3. Why? Akiba's Trip, Undead and Undressed. You Why would I sell me. my I... console? <laughs> Why would I sell my console? That's a stupid game. For a game that you won't buy. <laughs> also, right, why we... is there another Risen game? Another one? Risen 3. Yeah, this At... one deals with gods now, I think. At least it's not another Pirates game. There's another Pirates game? Well, you know what? All I can say is Square Enix delivering games nobody asked for since, what, 2008? 2009? Maybe well, early. Bravely Default was good. It was. They barely gave a shit about that game until it started selling well. <laughs> well, just saying, at least it's something. Let's see what's coming up for the Wii U in the next month. And oh, nothing. Okay, moving on. Aww. Octoberfest! Well, We're getting... Oh. Yeah, the 3DS. there's going to be a lull in what's available for the Wii U for like a couple months, but then you're gonna get like both of the versions of Smash coming out, Hyrule Warriors coming out. Smash, Smash, Bayonetta Smash. 2. Bayonetta 2, that's another one. Including Bayonetta 1. Meanwhile, 3DS at the end of August, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. That oh, actually yes. got a release date? Yeah. yeah, that's actually coming out. Whoa. Download only, I bet, because... Well, I know Shadow will probably get it day one. Sorry. I'm just going over the PS Vita release list and trying to figure out what's not just coming out for a console anyway. Okay, what's coming out for <laughs> not Vita, then? 
<laughs> that would be this very hard to do. This Tales of Hearts are coming out anytime soon? Uh, November? Uh, that's not really that soon, but okay. That's probably when I'll get a Vita. <laughs> well, you have to, Actually, yeah, you'll have time to save up for a Vita until then. Yeah. Or get, it, get one on Christmas or something, I don't know. Yeah, why did I buy my Vita again? Speaking of poorly managed money, let's just go right into recent pickups. Yeah, let's say what we're playing on. Yeah, let's see. Let's talk about what we actually got. To determine how we're going to do this, I'm going to take these two utility bills that I have to pay, and I'm going to flip them, and somehow that will determine who goes first. Okay, Angel, you go first. All right. Um, Steam sales was months ago, so... And there's a ton of games I haven't played yet, so I'll go over only the games I bought and played. South Park, The Stick of Truth, The Stanley Parable, Final Fantasy VII. No, I just get the PlayStation 3 download if you can. Metro Last Night Complete, that's pretty good. Metal Gear Rising, really good PC port. Orion, Dino Horde, it's all right. Space Hulk, it's going to take a lot of time getting used to. Um, I haven't gone home yet. And I don't remember myself yet, but I've also played King of Fighters 13, which is actually a really good PC port. Resident Evil 4, and H the HD sp version specifically, also a really good PC port. Um, Magical Drop 5, which is like 89 cents. Also a really know. good port. No, I'm just kidding. Alright. Pac-Man Championship Edition DX Plus, All You Can Eat Edition. Ultra Street Fighter 4, I actually decided to buy that. Okay, well, the PC version doesn't come out until the same day as the physical copy release, so I have to settle with Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition for now, which is surprisingly a lot better than the console versions, mainly because it loads really, really fast. Um, I got the Double, Drag Double Dragon Neon, also a really good game. Strider, really good. Um, and that covers pretty much all the games I've actually played from Steam. Um, I've all also got 20 of them you played. I'm only counting the ones that I've actually played. Um, all 20 of them. That's what it <laughs> felt like. Then, uh, then as for recent pickups, um, Trackmania Stadium, I got a three pack for myself and a couple other friends, as well as Shoot Mania. Both of them are really good games. Um, and a lot of my physical cop of different games. A lot of them are arcade compilations. The most recent of which I got, only two of them I'm going to count, is a Capcom Digital Collection for the Xbox 360. Got it for like $27. It normally goes for $40. And this one includes Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix, Final Fight Double Impact, 1942 Joint Strike, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix, Final Commando Rearm 2, Wolf of the Battlefield Commando 3, Rocket Man, and Flock. They, use, they tend to go for between 5 to $10 on Xbox Live Arcade. And I also found SNK Arcade Classics Volume 1, which is not a bad port of all the arcade games. As for actual games that I got, um, Okami for PlayStation 2. Ninja Assault for PlayStation 2. Been looking for that one forever. Olden Sphere. And I decided, and I saw this everywhere, decided to pick it up. Street Fighter Alpha Anthology. The weird thing about this version is that apparently there's an option to install it on a hard drive, except all the games load very, very fast, so I don't understand why it even needs a hard drive. But, you know, whatever. And I'm sure there are others, but I've already talked about 30 of them already, and if I cover every single Arcane compilation, I would probably have to sit here for five more minutes, so that's it. Okay, then getting away from Arcade compilations, hopefully, Unreal. Okay, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat for the GameCube, Resident Evil Code Veronica X for PS2, DK Bongos. That's it. That was mercifully short. <laughs> All right, uh, I guess I'll go next. And uh, this won't take too long, although I did get a couple of packs of things from Steam. Like, uh, I got Blade Symphony. I got. Oh, I got that too. I got Vanguard Princess, which, uh, if it wasn't in a pack, I never would have gotten it. I got that too. I have To the Moon, I have Witcher Gold, Witcher 2, uh, the Assassins of Kings edition, Trackmania 2 Stadium, Shoot Mania, which I still haven't installed, 
And moving on to physical games, I finally got a physical copy of uh, XCOM UFO Defense on PlayStation. Yeah, that was at Com Bravo. Yeah, these were at Com Bravo. Uh, I got a copy of Blue Dragon for the 360. <laughs> I can't wait till you get to the boss theme. And just for the hell of it, I got Arena Football Road to Glory. And signed by Angry Joe. Yeah, I can't believe you signed that. I wasn't aware Arena Football existed until you, sh you told me. It's existed for a couple decades. Wow. Sports. In fact, there's probably an Arena Football team within a couple hours drive of you. But well, where I, I live, I'm enough, <laughs> enough about Arena Football, though. Uh, <laughs> Blondie. Okay. Uh, uh, back during the Steam Summer Sale, I picked up a few things. Uh, mostly, I got Lone Survivor, the director's cut, which is kind of like a 2D uh, Silent Hill type of, type of game. I also got, I also finally got Cave Story Plus. And I also got Sam Max Season 1, since I didn't have the last two episodes, or haven't played those last two episodes of season one yet. I also got season three of Sam and Max of the Telltale games. There's also a couple of things I got off Steam later on, such as uh, Angel here gave me Hammer Watch, which was, I believe it was part of his humble, one of his many humble bundles that he got. He had codes to give away. I had like uh, seven of them. Yes. Uh, and I... You also gifted me uh, Trackmania 2 Stadium, which I have yet to play and install. But, uh, in terms of it, everything else, uh, I got Mario Kart 8 on Wii U, uh, Biden Kaidos Origins on GameCube, uh, Winback Covert Operations on PS2, since I, I saw that for like a few dollars. I also picked up Bioshock Infinite on 360, and I've actually played and been, been through that. And I also picked up uh, Batman Arkham City for PS3, and it's a Game of the Year edition, not the one with the cover with like a million ten and a ten plastered everywhere in the front, so it's not bad. <laughs> I also downloaded uh, Shovel Knight on Wii U, which is a good game. And, uh, and on Xbox Live Arcade, uh, they had deals for gold for Child of Light, which was uh, $5 off, so I got that. And, played through that it's a good it's also a good game and at con bravo i picked up a few games uh i got lollipop chainsaw on ps3 alien resurrection on playstation uh super mario galaxy 2 which was actually an extra copy i bought off of at the nes punk at the de at the dealer's room hmm. uh, i also and for xbox i got halo 2 finally and toe jam and earl 3 mission to earth Yes, it's a Toe Jam Hero 3. I might do a video on that someday. That should be it for me. If I may interject. Uh, I, actually, he... I actually forgot one thing as well. It'll be quick. Uh, Club Nintendo actually had their uh, platinum gifts. Everything was a digital game this year, which was... Uh, God, that was not good. So out of all the things, I got Dr. Luigi for the Wii U. That's, that's what I forgot, but that's it. Yeah, and speaking of Club Nintendo, you said you got Mario Kart 8, right, uh, Blondie? Yeah. Have you tried their promotion where you uh, register the game, you get a free download? Uh, I didn't do that because I already have all the games they, that they did the promotion for, like you would get free. Even and Wii I wasn't, Party U? I wasn't interested in getting Wii Party U, sorry. Oh, Dude, can I get, that's can that's I, basically what I had to do. You may as well just get it for the fuck of it. Like, who cares? Or I'm not get... gonna play with anyone. It's like, what's the point? Mario you... Party alone. <laughs> Mario Party alone. Or you can get me a free game. I wouldn't object. Is that even still? Is that, did it, that expire? It, 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 it's still good until the end of the month. Which, which is like literally now as of, the, of this recording, but yeah, well, you still have a few days. Oh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Is that it? I think so, yeah. Well then, I don't have a good transition for this. So, um, let's just dive right into this article that I found. Uh, it relates to Kickstarter. Now, are any of you familiar with a Kickstarter for 
a game called Confederate Express. Uh, I don't know if that's no. a good or a bad thing. No. What's it about? Well, I don't know what it's about either, and frankly, I don't care. But uh, the person who ran the Kickstarter, uh, Maxim Pashanin, uh, turns out he may not have been on the level. Because uh, as it turns out, he doesn't have his own studio. He was squatting in somebody else's condo for a few weeks. And when the news broke about this, he left a comment on his own Kickstarter page which says the following, quote, Okay, guys, what's the latest deets on the drama? 10 out of 10 would squat again. What? <laughs> now... <laughs> Is he being self-aware? Or something? No. no. The... This also comes shortly after the news about the Yogscast Kickstarter. Oh, Yog Adventures? Oh, no. I know about this. For those <laughs> of you who don't know what I'm talking about... Yogg's cast had a Kickstarter for their own game called uh, Yogg Ventures. It was backed by over 13,000 people, providing over $500,000 in pledges. What? And the game's canceled. <laughs> uh, if a Kickstarter campaign were to be canceled before it reaches its, uh, even while it, re even if it reaches its goal, um, do people still get a refund? It's pretty much like when when the goal is met, that's when they charge pretty, pretty much. Okay. I believe so, anyway. So the goal was met as in time expired? Pretty sure the goal yeah, was met. Yeah, the Kickstarter was back in 2012. Yeah, I'm pretty oh. sure that, that was met for that much, you know? But, Ooh. but not to worry, because Eurogamer was informed by the Ogscast people that, quote, they were under no obligation to do anything. Instead, we're going to do our best to make this right and make you really glad you backed the project. Making it right consisted of the following. Giving backers access to Tug, which is an open world survival game that's currently in development. And that's it. You know. So for those people who pledged $10,000 to Yogg Ventures, Here's an early access game. It's not so, even the game you pledged for. So, this is almost like when Microsoft's Xbox Live server shut down for like a week and they decided to and they decided to make up for it by giving us a really bad Xbox Live arcade game called Undertow. It, it, no, this now, is worse cuz these are pe these are people yeah. who like actively took money from people. Oh boy. Makes you wonder what they even did with the funds to begin with. If, it, if the game got can canceled, like, were they just squandered or something? I, I assume all these adds up to our discussion for today. Yes. Our discussion today is just help brainstorm for me. How to not get scammed by Kickstarter? Um, first of all, look at their videos. Um, if they have a video release that are supposed to serve as your first impression. I'm just gonna try to paraphrase uh, from Maddox on this one. Uh, you got one chance to make a good impression with me. If you blow it, I will never be your friend. In this case, I will never be your backer. I mean, if, if you're gonna have a Kickstarter campaign, especially with something very ambiguous, like you want $10,000, let alone $500,000, then you better be ready to make a damn good first impression. Otherwise, I'm not backing you at all. Wait, what about that Kickstarter about potato salad where the goal was $10 and it raised how much? Oh man. You know what? Keep talking. I will look up what happened to that. So uh, I think it was just the internet being. So, how have you guys been doing? Internet just being in the internet as usual. Well, they at least got what they uh, funded for, right? Yeah, it was just $10. <laughs> and it raised, like, at least four digits. Yeah, what? Uh, yeah, there are four kidding. days left on that Kickstarter. It's currently at $52,526. What? Everyone wants potato salad. How many stretch goals were met? Uh, there were stretch goals at $35, $75, and $100. Uh, $250, $300, $350, $1,000, $1,200, $1,500, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1
that uh, people just throw money at anything, even for the sake of it being like kind of a joke. This guy apparently lives in the same city as me too. How the hell? Why didn't you put your money down and get that free, that that special, not free, that special potato salad before anyone else? Because the guy's Dude. never made a potato salad before. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he needs the thousands of dollars to go to a potato salad making school. He even says in the Kickstarter, risks, the potato salad might not be that good. This is my first potato salad. <laughs> so I, good. I think we can easily dismiss those as more of something for fun but can be blown out of proportion at the same time. I, I mean, it's hard. I mean, it doesn't sound much like a scam to me, more of just someone who decided to do this for the hell of it. It was more or less Especially surprised. since the goal was like really low, just $10. $10. And <laughs> somehow he's got like $5,000 or will be getting $5,000. 50. 55,000. Shit. I, I need to start doing that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you feel guilty. Well, at least I'll be like, I only need five dollars. Then I get five hundred. It's like, oh shit, thank you. Oh shit, I'll just keep the rest and not make that. Whoa, scam. <laughs> okay. uh, just going back on topic with the whole yacast yes. thing. I think it. I think it proves that even if like goals are met and like you know it's supposedly it's funded stuff can still apparently happen like like whether or not you you would think this is a scam or not like it could just been something where it's like something happened with the development or something and like they, they weren't able to do it and they had to cancel it so then they were like, like well shit, what do we do to all these people that we that they people gave us all this money for and like like as shitty as it is the best we could do is just say oh here here's a early access to something else we can give you but that's all we can do unfortunately well i can say one thing right away that would help save a lot of idiots on kickstarter with too much money which is look into who is behind the project because the yog ventures thing the game was going to be developed by a thing called winter cool games you know how many games they've made none none Zero. yeah they, they, it's probably like another it's also the case, probably a case of like not knowing what they're getting themselves into kind of thing maybe um yeah, I, I exactly because like you have projects like mighty number no. nine armacrog just to name a couple examples they have established people who have been in the industry for a really long time yeah like they know Mega what Man. they're doing they know yeah. how to allocate all these different funds so that it doesn't go to waste yeah like with Mega Man and neighborhood like pretty much like people who were familiar with those were like oh they're making another one sweet back it up kind of thing i mean yeah. that's not to say um, you can't take your chances on some kind of kickstarter like not too long ago i backed a clothing kickstarter for something called neolux clothing which is like hoodies that have led lights sewn into them in various patterns and i admittedly took a decent chance on that but wound up paying off, and I didn't put that much money into the Kickstarter to begin with. And um, I, I think I think the better establish um, when it comes to game developers, there are some uh, independent game developers who are new to the industry and have barely anything to show for it. And even then, I would expect to see some sort of uh, proof of concept, if you will, like something they've worked on in the past and feel that they can take on, as long as it's some, something unrealistic. Like, I need five thousand dollars to really get this going off the ground. Uh, your project is not Metal Gear Solid Four, buddy. <laughs> but y you know what I'm saying. Like, there there are those people who have no, who, who don't really have an have their name established in the industry, even with, among indie developers. And there are some people who you could take chances with. It just depends on what they have to show for it. Because yeah, I mean, anyone. Because anyone can put up a studio name. All they have to do is get RPG Maker VX Ace and just make something up with it and, and make up a studio name and say, like, hey, I'm making a game. Give me $5,000 and I will make it happen. Anyone can make that up. It's just a matter of telling who's making this up and who's actually genuinely interested in making it happen. Yeah, it, it can be a double-edged sword like that where it's like, a lot of indie developers can get 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 going 
with the Kickstarter to get what they need to do to get their game going. But on the other hand, there's, well, people like you mentioned before, where it's like, oh, if I just do a Kickstarter, I can get money and, you know, and then or whatever. Like, I've noticed a ton of projects that are, like, up in high digits. And I'm not even exaggerating either. There actually are people who use nothing but RPG Maker VX Ace. Not to crap on that uh, engine entirely. It's actually pretty good. Uh, it just depends on how you make of it. Uh, what I can tell you is that you're not going to need thousands of dollars just to make a freaking RPG game of that thing. Hey, man, it costs money to get uh, Red Bulls and Doritos while you code. What the hell are you making? Call of Duty? Red Bulls? Excuse me, it's Mountain Dew. It's Call <laughs> of the Duty. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm getting at is that I've seen many, many people who do this. It's something to keep an eye out for. I kind of lost what I was going to say. Well, whatever, it's fine. I mean, it's like, you know, with Kickstarter, it's... It's... You know, I think no matter what, it's always going to be kind kind of a risk of whether or not they'll be able to pull it off. Like, you know, there's there's a risk of getting it getting it getting the Kickstarter funded is one thing, and then the next step is actually pulling it off with all the funds that were collected and stuff like that. I mean, for the most part, it can be successful, but there are instances like with the yacht cast thing and a bunch of other like Kickstarters and stuff where. It may not go as planned, and you know, shit happens. Oh, another example I could throw out is uh, the Neverending Nightmares Kickstarter, mm. which, admittedly, that was by uh, Matt Gilgenbach, who the only other game off the top of my head I can say that he worked on was Retrograde. Yes. But something he does that like helps alleviate fears about contributing to his projects is he has extremely regular updates about what he's specifically doing with the project. Yeah, that, yeah, that's another thing. Uh, a lot of Kickstarters, when you back them, they'll send you emails of like updates on their project. That's usually a good reassuring like of thing of, of being like, hey, we're, we're working on it, we did this, here's a picture of an upcoming thing, kind of, kind of, kind of thing that, they're, that they do. And like you said, with Never Any Nightmares, I think that's like, out of like the three Kickstarter things I've backed, uh, that is the one where I definitely get the most updates from. Yeah, how many updates is he on? Like 85? Something like that? Yeah, and he's like, what, only like halfway done the game or something? <laughs> Which makes sense, because you got random people uh, helping to publish this game. So, like any other developer that has to present to their investors uh, how, the prog how much progress they've made, they have to keep people informed the people who've been investing into the project, just keep them informed of how far they've been going along with their project. Yeah, exactly. And actually, I went back and I looked at the Yogg Ventures Kickstarter page, and they do say that they have experienced veterans in the game industry working with Winter Bowl Games. Who? I mean, anyone yeah. can just yeah, do type that down. Yeah, they not say <laughs> any names? Yeah, like, they didn't say so-and-so worked on this. They didn't even say that. Nope. Hmm. Yeah, that's another thing to look out for. I was actually watching this one video <clears throat> where it's about uh, about three people making an MMO game who claim to have uh, all this ex all these connections in the game industry that can help make that game happen. They had to kick their start. They had to kickstart their game like twice, and they still haven't met their goal. I wonder if it has to do with the grammar or the fact that they're so unorganized or the fact that their proof of concept video just looks like garbage. But another thing I should probably mention to look out for as far as scams, uh, look at the stretch goals. That's not to say it's a 100% indicator that it's a scam because even some, even some uh, Kickstarters that still go through with it will still have some pretty poor stretch goals, like this one card game where every $10,000 you get one card added, and then another $10,000, one card, and then $25,000, you get a cosplay version of a regular card. Wow. Oh, and besides, Jordan, you always gotta remember, we did our research beforehand. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, 
trust me, I did my research on Kickstarter scams. My sources are... Anyway. Google. <laughs> Uh, but that's another thing. To, but other than, while there are some people who do go through the Kickstarter and have some really bad uh, uh, stretch goals, it could be a good indicator of how serious they are of the project or if they're just scamming you. Especially with, especially when they have stretch goals that will be like ten dollars, you will feel good about donating. Fifteen dollars, you will feel really good about donating. That sort of thing. And five hundred dollars, uh, you get the. You get to come out and have a meal on me, that sort of thing. And who, I'm sorry, who are you to say that? Am I really gonna give you $500 because I really care that much about meeting the guy behind a game he's making with RPG Maker? I know I'm constantly using that as an example, and I know there's other examples out there, like Mujin and whatnot. But you, you know what I mean. Can I add something? Yeah. It's it's not related to Kickstarter, but what happened two weeks ago? That was funded by an Indiegogo campaign. So I want you to guess what happened two weeks ago that cost seventeen thousand dollars to go in the ball pit. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, keep in mind that Dashcon thing was Indiegogo funded. Oh God, there's so much wrong that went to it. The internet pretty much already posted so many stories about it. I can pretty much yeah. Give you if you like. If, yeah. if anyone ends up watching this, you probably already know about DashCon. It made me feel bad about my negative opinions, well, some of my negative opinions towards Kineticon, which was the same weekend. And when I came home and found out about DashCon, I was like, you know, I take all the bad things I said about Kineticon back because at least it wasn't DashCon. At least no one at Kineticon tried paying off the utilities of the convention center with a prepaid debit card. Oh, Walter Jones couldn't make it? You get like an extra hour in the vault pit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can pretty much just give you the abridged version. Um, God. Supposedly, they got. I, sorry, Angel. Lot. I mean, that official release they put out after the convention did so much more damage. Because if you read through that, you can just figure out every single thing that went wrong beyond what people just saw. Wait, the press release? Yeah. Uh, like the ball like, pit thing, when they said that, the person who said that had not actually seen the ball pit. They didn't even <laughs> look at the ball pit before they bought it. <laughs> you better link this to us, because I want to look at this later. I'll, I'll link it to you later. Unless it's the, it's the article I was thinking of, but if it's a different one, I want to read it. So yeah, definitely bring that up later. So that kind of explains why the ball pit is the size of a kiddie pool. Mm -hmm. And that oh, like... someone peed in it, and it deflated. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! That I assume that those no, are not related did instances. Happen. It both did? did happen. It did. Yeah, someone actually peed in the ball pit. Oh my god! I am not joking about that. You you think I would be, but no. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Um, I also saw a few uh, Dashcon uh, cosplayers at San Japan. There was a dash con like artwork in the artist alley of Con Bravo. Yeah, there was artwork of the ball pit and it sold out really fast. It got viral very quickly, like within a week, I think. Within a day, like the day, pretty much. That's how internet works. All that fucking money, where did it go? And that, and that's going back to the Kickstarter. Well, the answer to that is actually in the press release, but go on. That's basically all I had to add. Oh, well, should I just explain? Yeah. The money was used to cover utilities, because they organized how much the space would cost, but they didn't organize how much things like electricity would cost. They just got the space, and that was it. Oh my god. So they came completely unprepared for this. Mostly, yeah. yes. I mean, I know it's their first con, but... Did you really need something huge to make it happen? No. I've been to first cons before for other cons. They at least had the basics down. Dashcon didn't even have that. Yeah. Like, I know that Con Bravo started off with uh, being a free convention at first, and it took place at a college campus. 
Or am I thinking of something else? Yeah. And then eventually they got big from there to where John Tron apparently got accepted as a guest, as well as most of the guys from that guy of the glasses. Yeah, I mean, I was at Con Rebel like at, it, at their second year, I think, the first time I went. And that was when they moved to a, a natural like hotel. And now they're at a convention center. It, it's hard to describe. Like, what were they expecting? Like, they say they were expecting like thousands among thousands of people and they rented out a whole convention center. Um, and they had people who had like almost no experience with running conventions. Yeah, they wound up with 500 people and they were relying solely upon at the door sales for their money. Or whatever money people decide to throw in the bag for them. Yeah, they, they were kind of ambiguous about how they're going to repay people who paid in cash. <laughs> the collection plate at church. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know if I had a train of thought, but it got completely derailed. YouTube videos will do that. <laughs> Thanks, MLG. So, scams. Yeah, they can happen, unintentionally or not. Um, anything else that should be covered? The uh, only other thing I can mention is you got to be even more careful on places that aren't Kickstarter, like Indiegogo, where even if it doesn't hit its goal, it can still get at least partial funding. Hmm. But that's pretty much all that I can say on the subject. The only thing I'm reminded of is is when uh, Shadows of the Eternal tried to get funded, which was the spiritual successor to Eternal Darkness. Oh god, that clusterfuck. Yeah, that that's that's like almost an entirely different story in itself, really. That was mostly controversy with the people involved. Just blame Dennis Dynak. That's really all you need to do. <laughs> Pretty much. As, and as well as look at how much money they're making and look at the scope of their project and ask yourself, does it? do they really need that much money to make it happen? Especially if it's a simple game you can make on Android and iOS. Like, at most, you only need like $100 just, to, just for licensing alone. Yeah, just however much Game Maker costs, however much any sort of graphics program cost. Yeah. I, I don't mean anything sp sophisticated. I mean, like, GIMP, an old version of Paint Shop Pro, or... Yeah. And, th like, there are free versions of those programs out there, like... And there are some people who go into this without having a clue what they need. Like that one Kickstarter where it's about... where a guy wants to make a Let's Play channel. Anyway, stuff like that to look out for. Anything else I might have left out or need to add? I don't think so. I believe that draws this conversation to a close. But you know what? I do have a question for you. A viewer question? God damn it, Blondie. Steal my thunder. What? Did we have to kick him out again? Mm. Yeah, so that apparently happened before, right? Yeah, yeah, that other podcast. How's that going for you? Oh, it's doing fine. It has like hundreds of thousands of views. Just it's just in an alternate dimension. That's why it's not. On, that's why you can't see it here. Hundreds of thousands of unlisted views. Yep, All those views me. going towards the money in the ball pit. <laughs> Blondie stealing your thunder. Is he the Ninja Storm Ranger? So the question. This is asked by. Garin Blue, Garin Blue. Not sure how to pronounce that first word. But anyway, the question is, what is the most obscure video game you own? I I would immediately say Another World, but it's been gaining a lot of popularity lately, thanks uh, mainly because of how it just recently got re-released on the Wii U, PS3, 360, 3DS, and Vita. So I guess that's out of the question. I got one. Um, off like. For the Super Nintendo, I actually have one. It's called Phantom 2040. Uh, <laughs> I used to watch the cartoon for that. It, it, it's based off the Phantom, and oh god, the, the the fucking Phantom was at that cartoon panel I went to in Kinetic Console. Let's be on the point. Um, 
Um, I found out about it from, uh, I think it was a 16-bit gem video, except it was like a crossover thing with Rue and some other guy, and that game was brought up. And when I got this entire, like, uh, box of SNES games back in my old gaming center before it closed down and stuff, I bought it, I, I basically bought a bunch of games in there and I took Phantom 2040 for the hell of it. I, I didn't play much of it, but that's really the most obscure game I own just off the top of my head. So there you go. Um, the most obscure I own, I own way too many. If I have to dive deep into games that I'm sure nobody has ever heard of at all in their life, I would probably have to resort to my uh, Sega Saturn collection. Uh, among those games are Creature Shock. That's such a great game, right? I know, I, st I saw the video in the works. Um, Dark and Dark Savior, and well, basically, I just have a bunch of obscure games. I don't know which one I should consider to be the most obscure, since I just look out for these things. I, I could say the most obscure game that I don't like I got, um, if I can read the name from here. Dark Angel for PlayStation 2, which I think was originally supposed to be a Dreamcast game. Um, I've streamed it before. I might have mentioned it before on the podcast, actually. Uh, in terms of like obscure stuff I have, I mean, I know I kind of review obscure stuff to begin with, but I guess uh, the stuff I've reviewed or have the most obscure would probably be stuff on the Sega CD and the TurboGrafx-16. Mm -hmm. I guess if I would narrow it down, like probably something like... I know you mentioned Another World, but I, I guarantee you the, the sequel, Heart of the Alien, is much more obscure still. It is. And for good reasons, too. Yeah, which I've covered extensively in my video, but... Uh, and which Chuck a Conway followed you for? Yeah, that's another... Yeah, that's one thing at uh, Con Bravo. The Runaway guys were there as guests, and... Uh, and apparently Chuck Conroy of them actually knows me. He's seen that video in El Comedian. So that was actually kind of a surprise that a popular Let's Player like that actually know who I was. But, but besides the point, uh, but yeah, pretty much anything on the Sega CD and TurboGrafx-16, I'll just say, is, is my most obscure stuff. Especially since the TurboGrafx games are really hard to find these days, unless you're yeah, like, like Yeah, like physical copies. I mean, yeah. Military Madness at, at Comp Bubble was like 40 bucks. I'm just like, oh. It's like, why why do the, the best TurboGrafx games have to be expensive? But that's just game collecting for you, I guess. Yeah, like, unless your name is China Warrior or Bonk's Adventure, I see those in pretty much every game store I go to. Um, I haven't seen Bonk's Adventure. Really? Shit. At least not at least not at events I've been to. Shit. I know what game I'm going to have to get. Hmm. As for me, I mean... I'm not really sure what would count as obscure. I, mean, I, I have games that I think are obscure, but other people might not think. Like, I have Skyblazer on the SNES. I mean, on the NES, I know most people who think like NES skateboarding game go, go to like Skate or Die, but I've got the uh, NES port of 720. Um, I'm not really sure if this would count as obscure either, but like, Sheer on the Wanderer on the Wii. But that's part of a series of games, so I don't know if it's that obscure, but I think overall... Oh, then I have the crap games. Like, uh, what's it called? Stonekeep Bones of the Ancestors. <laughs> which yeah, is the sequel, an, the sequel to... It. I'm calling Sorry. it an unofficial non-canon sequel to the original Stonekeep, which I also have, which is also a little obscure. Because fuck that if it's ever canon. But uh, I think overall the most obscure game that I had... Oh, and Phoenix 3 on the 3DO. That's another terrible one that I uh, can't find any info on. <laughs> or anything for the 3DO, for that matter. That yeah, you pretty much. Oh, well, to be fair, you got Space Hulk. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, That's also kind of obscure. But yeah. Overall, though, I think the most obscure game I have is for the PlayStation 2, and it's called Obscure. Ha. Huh. I've actually heard about that okay, one. Wait, uh, can you hear this? Can you hear this? The yeah. knee has been slapped. <laughs> oh, I've actually heard about that game uh, in an X-Play review. Where it was, well, I heard it's actually a decent game. The sequel was terrible, though. Yeah. 
the the only thing I know that's unique about that one is the two player co op mode, which not many survival horror games did at the time, and that any character can die, which is not done too often. In which game is this? Obscure. Obscure. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, it, kind of similar to Sweet Home for the Femicom, where each character of their each character has their own abilities, and you don't need all of them to beat the game. Or the second game, yeah. Or also kind of like Maniac Mansion in a way. Yeah. Just hope you like some 41. Uh, which some 41? Because some of their stuff was okay, but then they kind of got eh. Uh, one of their more popular tracks was featured in the introduction of the game. What? How did it go? I don't know. I heard it all the time back then. It's either Fat Lip or... Well, wait. Else. What year did the game come out? Like... Uh, 2004-ish, I think. Probably Fat Lip or the other song. Or In Too Deep. Yeah, In Too Deep was the other song. I don't think Still Waiting was out at that time. Or was it? I don't know. I don't give a shit about them. <laughs> yeah, the game was released in North America in 2005. Featuring music by Sun41 in Span. Uh, any other obscure uh, games and, to mention? And, and the track is called Still Waiting, by the way. Called it. <laughs> but yeah, some 41 aside, uh, have we talked about all the obscure games we want to mention? I believe SER had more. No, obscure was my most obscure game. <laughs> In the literal sense, yeah. <gasps> well, hey. that sounds like a cop out. You mentioned what? other obscure, actual obscure shit too. Whatever. Anyway. If anyone else has a question that they want us to answer on the podcast, feel free to ask it in the YouTube comments or just send us a message or leave us a message on Facebook, facebook.com slash RiverCityGamers. But until then, video updates. And, oh, I'm going first. Well, uh, I should actually mention this right away. Uh, I just did the $5 gaming on Tony Hawk Ride. I'm not going to leave $5 Gaming yet. I'm going to immediately work on uh, Shred to follow it up. Although I might do a Hindsight Miscellanea in between the two. But once I have Shred done, then I'm going straight to... <sighs> Bloody War 4. Oh boy. It's uh, finally come. That is going that to take a while. time of year again. But uh, honestly, I think that's it for me video wise uh so blondie okay uh right now i'm actually currently recording game footage for the next black sheet interview which is fallout brotherhood of steel for the ps2 and xbox and uh so that's coming along and then um in terms of other stuff there'll be like other stuff i'll be doing too like uh like the Tales of Retrospective and maybe a sequel, you know, I'll, they'll still be able to be between those. But there'll be other things in between that I might try and do. Uh, I actually just recently, today as of this recording actually, I got a means to record off of an iPad. So I actually am planning on maybe doing some iOS stuff. Only Maybe only a few things though. Uh, it's mostly for the uh, Tales of Fantasia iOS version because Namco in their infinite wisdom uh, they're deciding to completely shut down the game on iOS here because it didn't do that well. Namco in their infinite wisdom releasing an iOS version. Yes, which is free to play but has microtransactions up the ass. Namco but... in their infinite wisdom. <laughs> we, heard, we heard you the first time. Mm. Let's anyway. just reiterate it though. I really need a reiteration because no pay, pay, transactions really. And it, yes, I'll get to it someday for the retrospective of that version. But so, but there are, are a couple other iOS games I may want to uh, try and record and maybe do quick videos on. You know, of, of games of a series like kind of, of from a series of games that I kind of already did before. As reviews, so and I kind of briefly mentioned them before, so that's just a little hint there. Um, now, of course, the fun thing with recording off of iOS, uh, off in an iPad, is that I got an HDMI cable and for it, 
and I do have an HDMI capture device, but apparently it's HDMI protected on an iPad or something, so I basically have to like, but it still shows up in the preview for my capture software, so I have to cap screen capture the software, the preview from, it, it, gets, it gets complicated, but I should have the means to do it, so that's the important thing. And other than that, there's just there's just the usual like few ideas and things I still need to edit and get started on for like the River City Gamers YouTube, and that's about it. All right, Unreal. Ha <laughs> ha! What's up? Uh, Let's just uh, put a recording of that every time. Yeah, just like just take exactly that and put it every episode. But no, I I got something. I swear. Okay. What is it? Uh, <clears throat> oh, okay, mister. Uh, trying to find the right words to start with. Uh, okay. So, as as we're recording this, the Destiny beta actually ended. So, I'm actually starting to write um, something uh, in terms of, like, uh, kind of reviewing the beta, but I don't want to call it a review, you know? Because it's not a full game. But I, I'm, I'm planning to do a video based on my experience with the Destiny beta and stuff. And probably after I get that done, if I get it done, just put if in there because that always happens. Uh, I haven't forgotten about the plug and play I have um, that, that I've like recorded and stuff. I just got to keep working on that. But that'll probably come after the Destiny stuff. But, I recorded around maybe 43 or more gigabytes worth of Destiny beta footage because HD footage takes a lot. We think that's we think that's big. You should try Fraps footage. Well, uh, no. no, no, we'll just take Fraps and put it in that SDA thing to make it even lower size. But th that's all I've got planned. Um, I actually started making a checklist of thoughts of the uh, Destiny beta to at least have a starting point, and then I could put one together, like in terms of video or review type of thing. I don't know how long it'll take me, but I don't have a lot of work this week, so maybe my free time I'll be able to like sit down and actually work on something. But we'll see. That's all. That's all I've got for me. Other than that, it's business as usual. Don't expect anything. All right, and Angel. Yeah, I don't got anything. All right. Although. <laughs> ah, and I thought I did nothing. What is this shit here? Are you kidding me? Although, um, because of the success of my panel, um, I plan on uploading a video I've recorded for it. Uh, it's not going to be anything fancy. It's mostly just going to show what I've been doing for the panel. Um, it, it might be a little difficult for me to edit because a lot there's been a lot of aud audience participation with this one. Um, but I'll try my best to get it out. I'll try my best to uh, subtitle what the audience said if I can hear them. However, uh, because of the positive reception I've received, I'm already on the works of making an updated version of that panel for next year. Ever since, I've been experimenting with different methods on my arcade cabinet. I still plan on doing a video review of that someday. So that's definitely something to look forward to. You know, when I'm not trying to study for a medical career. Yeah, me, doing medical stuff. Anyway, as far as videos go, uh, a plug-and-play will be coming soon. That much I can say. Oh, did you say yes? I couldn't hear it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that <laughs> okay. was it. Well, Sorry. that takes us to the end of the podcast. Once again, I am STXER. I am Unreal. I'm Blunder Gamer. I'm Angel Halo. And I'm going to be outside. Yeah, I'm going to be outside too. Everyone's outside. <laughs>